During the London Underground's construction, attention was turned away from the building of the tunnels to what engines would run the line. Diesel was practically non-existent at the time and electric trains were still being developed and so steam locomotives would have to do the job. The problem was, however, steam locomotives exhaust a lot of steam and smoke, not something you would want in an enclosed environment. To get around this, John Fowler came up with a design that would solve this problem. The only issue was, it may have almost been a bomb too. Fowler's idea was relatively simple. Make it so the boiler could build up and maintain enough pressure so that it could complete its journey before running out of steam. To do this, the engine was fitted with a large number of fire bricks to act as a heat reservoir. The engine could be fired and ran conventionally outside of the tunnels, and when hot enough, dampeners could be closed to stop smoke and steam from escaping, with the hot fire bricks heating up the water in the boiler to produce the steam needed to drive the engine. Steam would also be recondensed and fed back into the boiler instead of exhausted, not only helping keep the boiler topped up, but also helping maintain the heat of the water in the boiler. The engine was built for broad gauge tracks and was completed in 1861. As the underground wasn't completed yet, it was trialled on the Great Western Railway around Hanwell Station. And to make a long story short, it was a disaster waiting to happen. Not only did the condenser fail to properly condense any of the steam, but the engine's boiler pressure quickly dropped. On top of this, the the boiler feed pumps kept on jamming, meaning no water was being fed to the boiler. Here's a quick science lesson. If a pressurized container gets too hot, which is what a boiler is, the air inside it will expand, and with nowhere to go, will cause the boiler to eventually explode. Water in the boiler usually keeps it safe enough, however if the water runs dry, there's a good chance it might go bang. It has happened many times that an engine's boiler has run dry, so to stop it from exploding, the fireman can simply drop the fire out of the bottom of the firebox. No fire, no heat. No no more heat, the boiler cools down, no explosion. So when the feed pumps jammed on Fowler's engine, the fireman quickly dropped the fire to prevent the boiler from getting any hotter. However, to his horror, he found that the very hot fire bricks could not be dropped and were still heating the boiler. With the fire gone, all the driver and fireman could do was pray the boiler didn't go bang. By some miracle, it didn't. It was trialled again between King's Cross and Edgware Road, but seemed to have performed just as poorly. By February of 1865, the engine was put up for sale and purchased with the intent of rebuilding it in standard gauge. The rebuild never happened, and as a result, the engine was scrapped in 1894. The engine was noted as a fine, sturdy creation, but the trouble was her boiler not only refrained from producing smoke, it produced very little steam either. The story of the engine and its trials were kept relatively secret for many years, apparently being covered up, leading many to nickname it Fowler's Ghost. Most Metropolitan steam engines ended up using a similar method to reduce the amount of smoke and steam they emitted while underground, where steam would be condensed and fed back into the water tanks, with the water tanks gradually heating up, acting somewhat as a heat reservoir for the boiler. Overall, Fowler's Ghost was one of those ideas that's great on paper, but grim in practice. Regardless of its failure, it did help point designers in the right direction when it came to developing future metro engines and fireless locomotives. All the same though, let this be a lesson to double check your designs, just so you know you're building an engine, not an explosion. Subscribe for more.